Welcome to another edition of RCE. I'm your host, Brock Palin, and I have again Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and the Open MPI Project. Jeff, we have a interesting little show today. Yes, we do. Yes, uh, some guys that I've actually known for, for quite a long time, and uh, a lot of people come up to me and say, hey, do you hate those guys? And No, we don't, actually. And, and just so <laughs> you have no idea what I'm talking about, we're talking about the MPitch guys. And uh, as a matter of fact, little known fact, one of our one of our guests today was on my PhD dissertation committee. So we actually go way back, and the collaboration between our teams actually goes way back as well. The website for RCE always is rce-cast.com. There's a RSS feed and, the, of course, the iTunes feed there, and you can find old shows. And there's a nomination form if you want to nominate anyone else to be on the show. Also, you can find uh, my Twitter account on there where I will post who's coming up on the show and do a call for questions. If there's anything you ever want to have asked on the show, please include it. Get a little shout-out on the show. Uh, my Twitter name is Brock Palin, B-R-O-C-K-P-A-L-E-N. Yeah, well, actually, let me throw in one minor shout out there to my own blog, which is linked off the RCE cast page as well. It's a MPI and general HPC blog. I, I try to get about one post a week or so, and sometimes they're a little meaty, and sometimes they're things that you know people have asked me about, so I, I try to put it out there so the answers become Googleable and things like that. So if you ever have any questions or comments about uh, MPI and network-related issues, you know, throw them at me, and I'll, I'll put them on the blog. Actually, some of your comments recently about asking what to do with MPI F.H has been a, uh, was actually, I was thinking about that a bit too. And actually our guests today probably have some input on that. So why don't you go uh, ahead and introduce them? Yeah. So we have, uh, the, the original M pitch guys here. So, and, and I'm, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong. So we'll ask this again later, but, uh, Rusty Lusk from Argonne National Labs. Rusty, I wonder if you can introduce yourself. Uh, sure. Um, uh, my, uh, my real name is uh, Ewing Lusk. That's uh, the, the, what it's written down. But uh, I've always been known as Rusty. I'm uh, currently the uh, division director for the Mathematics and Computer Science Division here at Argonne National Lab. Uh, this is a division that hosts uh, uh, applied mathematics and computer science research, uh, most of which has to do with uh, algorithms and software for uh, very large uh, scale parallel machines. Great, which means that overall you're a really busy guy, and so we appreciate you taking the time for us today. And uh, our other guest is uh, first time ever, somebody, a, a repeat guest who was on uh, just a few shows ago, uh, Dr. Bill Grob from the University of Illinois. Bill, could you uh, give another intro to yourself? Sure. So I'm a professor of computer science at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. Uh, I'm also the Deputy Director of Research for our Institute for Advanced Computing Technologies and Applications, which is a, essentially a uh, organization that tries to connect the National Center for Supercomputing Applications to the rest of campus. And in NCSA, I'm a PI on the Blue Waters Project, which is the NSF-funded project to provide what we believe will be the first sustained petascale machine. Cool. And all that also translates to the fact that you're an incredibly busy guy, and so we also appreciate the fact that you've taken the time out for us twice. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's roll right into this. Um, you guys were the original authors. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody, tell me what is the correct pronunciation? It's well, M P I C H. <laughs> Even <laughs> says that in the book, but <laughs> <laughs> but we've given up. Um, <laughs> Even even I have been known to say in pitch from time to time. <laughs> I kick him when he does, but <laughs> then he yes, you'll have to me forgive, when I do it. <laughs> you'll have to forgive me because throughout the course of this, I am sure that I will say it the wrong way. Wait, just because it's been, it's it's, it's so ingrained. Uh, I, it's okay. I apologize. We give you permission. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, tell you what. Can you guys uh, give us uh, an overview? What is MPICH and and what are the project goals? Uh, the uh, the project goals for MPICH were, have been from the beginning to be both a research project and a software project. Uh, MPICH started during the uh, MPI forum, the first time the MPI forum started meeting in back in, uh, in 1993. Uh, both Bill and I had uh, portable parallel programming libraries at that time. Uh, Bill's was called uh, Chameleon, mine was called P4. And we started working together, and we started uh, going to the forum meetings. 
the CH in MPICH actually stands for chameleon. And so uh, during uh, an early stage of the forum, we decided we would try to uh, do a test implementation. And as the forum developed its standards and changed its mind from week to week, um, we uh, developed uh, MPICH uh, as a test implementation. Yeah, so yeah, I think one of the interesting things was that um, when the MPI effort was just getting started, I was watching the discussion on one of the news groups discussing the C language, and the GNU guys were tracking all of the uh, various ideas and discovering what worked and what didn't, and I just thought this was great. So when the group that eventually became the MPI forum got together at the uh, pretty infamous Minneapolis supercomputing meeting, uh, we decided that we would commit to doing the same thing, having a rolling implementation uh, that allowed us to check out how implementable or how uh, uh, well-defined the ideas were. And um, that also then allowed us to have an implementation that was ready to go the moment the standard was finished. Of course, this is not how you're supposed to do software. You're supposed to wait until the spec is finished before you start coding. Um, so we were really doing exactly the opposite thing in order to help debug the spec. But I think the, the fact that uh, once the uh, spec was finished, the, then the first implementation was finished, uh, did help get MPI off to a running start in terms of uh, adoption. So M MPICH was the, I almost said M pitch there. MPICH. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> MPICH was the very first implementation of MPI from the first forum. Right. Yeah. There, there were a couple of others that appeared shortly there, shortly after we did MPICH, but uh, MPICH was done, uh, basically, it was done before we voted on the standard. Uh, it was definitely first. <laughs> <laughs> So how different is MPI from Chameleon and P4, or are most of the ideas there the same? There are a lot of differences. The, um, uh, uh, at the time, message passing layers had different um, semantics, so they all gave send and receives, but there were different ways in which uh, um, different meanings for some of the tags or when messages were delivered, uh, when you could reuse messages and so forth. Um, and uh, Chameleon in particular tried to provide a sort of general portability layer but papered over some of those details. It was still fairly effective, but it didn't include a lot of the features that are in MPI to support, for example, the use of or the creation of modular software and the use of libraries. Um, I'll let uh, Rusty comment on the P4 um, parts, but one of the, I think the big things is that through the forum's effort, MPI became a, a complete and well thought out collection of routines, and there was no library, even from the vendors uh, at the time, that was as, um, as consistent and as well thought out. Yeah, I, I would say the same thing. Uh, P4 was uh, uh, our uh, attempt to try to uh, get some level of portability across the existing system so that every, all the vendors competed with one another at that time on their message passing API as well as on their hardware and their performance. And uh, this was, of course, a hopeless situation for applications. And so P4 was invented as a way to write a portable application that would run on all the various uh, parallel systems of the time, uh, and it, it, uh, I would say, um, it, it didn't have anywhere near the ambition of the MPI form in terms of defining, as Bill said, a, a complete system with uh, carefully thought out uh, semantics, and also uh, a lot of new ideas uh, came in MPI. It, it wasn't just a, uh, a portability layer; it had uh, had new ideas in it. Uh, that, uh, that none of the existing systems had. Uh, Bill mentioned especially uh, 